Okay, welcome to another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with, is Asna Fellis here at the University of Ottawa. So can you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Yes, uh, first of all, I wanted to thank you, uh, uh, Michael, for this initiative of bringing us together uh, to think about how we can harness our expertise and experience to help teachers and parents in these difficult times. Um, yeah, but let me begin by telling you a bit about my background in education and online learning. Um, I became a teacher when I was in high school. My mom was a single parent of six children and she encouraged me to start giving private lessons. This was the beginning of my career as an educator. I now hold a PhD in education, teaching, learning and evaluation, as well as more than 20 years experience teaching in various contexts. Um, so uh, I first as an elementary school teacher, uh, then as a high school teacher, and then as a teacher educator. Uh, most importantly, my partner and I have four children of our own, so I have first-hand experience with the everyday challenges and sense of accomplishment associated with raising children. Um, here is how I got interested in technology and learning, not because it is in reality uh, a field that is detached uh, from what learning is about, but because it is recognized as a separate field of research. As part of my PhD studies, I was working on understanding the notion of learners' identity as users and doers of mathematics. And I began collaborating with Dr. Yaniv Biton uh, from the Center of Educational Technology in Israel. The center serves the very diverse population of Israel. And we have been looking at how we can harness technological tools to allow more students learn advanced mathematics online. Uh, we've been working on adaptive learning, for example, augment, uh, augmented reality in the uh, learning of uh, geometry, uh, professional online learning communities, and virtual high school, among other topics. Very good. Now, compared to most of the guests I've had on this, um, you come in with a little bit more of a unique perspective because while you work with teachers in, at the University of Ottawa in Canada and introducing them to technology, you've also had the experience of working with the folks that have been teaching with the virtual high school in Israel. Um, so you've, you've got a much more international perspective than a lot of the folks that uh, we've had on uh, this uh, feature. So thinking about those teachers now that are being tossed into this remote instruction environment, um, what are some things that you've learned over the years uh, working with those teachers in different contexts that might be little tidbits that might help some of these teachers survive the, the turmoil that they're going through now as they're being tossed into this new environment? So one thing I learned uh, is that uh, there's not much of a difference um, in uh, what teachers do with children in uh, different countries. It's basically It basically boils down to the fact that, uh, and to the reality, that teachers really are there to make sure that uh, students grow and uh, develop. I mean, regardless whether it is in Israel or in Canada, in, in uh or in the United States, England, or any other country. So... But these are special times um, and uh, that require special approaches to optimize remote learning um, uh, because there are so many tools, programs and re renditions of content available online. I think that following a few principles um, uh, uh, to guide teachers uh, a, it can be helpful. I would like to uh, introduce uh, the AAA model of authorship, autonomy, and agency. And again, that's based on my experience and my expertise in education um, that can be nurtured through online or remote, uh, remote learning. The question is, however, is how can we most effectively harness available tools, online tools? And this answer uh, is actually uh, leading me to another question. Uh, the answer to this question is actually leading me to another question. What is schooling about? While we may have different ideas about what schooling is about, I think we all see schooling as opportunities for growth and development. In order to uh, 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 create conditions for growth, 
uh, and development through available technology, we need to remember that we want our children to learn to think rather than to memorize a slew of facts. They want, they, we want them to develop their confidence in what they know and their own interest in answering questions they themselves come up with. Uh, their agency also in looking for answers for the questions uh, that they come up with. So that reminds me of the work of uh, Simo Papert in 1992, uh, a book he, he wrote, uh, a, which is very, um, which makes it very relevant to uh, what we are experiencing today. He called the book, The Children's Ma Machine. And actually, I have the book here, The Children's Machine. I know it's a mirror um, view, so you may not uh, uh, see the cover. But uh, in this book, uh, what uh, Seymour did was is actually celebrating the, uh, the agency of children and, uh, and in, uh, in, this, in forming their own learning and the path the, of, of learning and really making learning a meaningful uh, for themselves. So he has beautiful ideas about uh, what schooling is about, what it should be, and really framing technology, computer include, computers included, and uh, as 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 uh, something that it is a natural part of learning. Um, so for the teachers, again, regardless of where they are. Uh, in the face of uh, the pandemic, I would uh, recommend working with, with this uh, uh, AAA model, autonomy, authorship, and uh, agency. The question is how, how can teachers, you know, uh, do it, uh, you know, in, as, as actions? How, how, what actions do they need to uh, put in place? So uh, I would recommend three basic um, uh actions. One that uh, allows for cooperation between students. Uh, the other one uh, is um, uh, thinking about activities that allow for collaboration between students. And the third one, thinking about activities that allow for community building between the uh, uh, students and teacher, uh, the teacher and the students. So this can be done through uh, collectively setting individual and shared goals with the students and see to it that they, the students work in small groups asynchronically and, synch and synchronically to achieve these goals through cooperation, that is by helping and supporting each other achieve these res their respective goals, and through collaboration, that is by working together to achieve a common goal to create something new where the whole is greater than the sum of its part. Very good. It's interesting that you mentioned Seymour Papert because the uh, follow-up book that he wrote after The Children's Machine was one called The Connected Family. And right now our families are playing a much more direct role in the uh, support of their child's education than what they would in, in a traditional school setting. Um, so thinking about the parents that are out there now who have children at home but are expected to um, at least facilitate with you know the, the guidance of the teacher um, their children's learning at this stage. What advice would you have for those folks? Thank you for this question. As uh, fulfilling and enjoyable uh, it may be to raise kids in any in, an, in during normal times. It's not easy to be a parent in normal times. Uh, juggling work, home, uh, the kids' schedules around physical activity, uh, schoolwork, and at the same time attending to their health and well-being. But it's more, it's far more uh, challenging to be a parent under such restrictions imposed on us in order to fight off the pandemic of COVID-19. One of the biggest changes that require adjustments on the part of the uh, parents and adaptation is the new reality where time, space, and action need to be reconceptualized. If as parents, we were used to getting up in the morning at a certain time, wake up the kids, have breakfast, get dressed, leave the house to catch the bus or, or and go to school and be there on time in order to begin a school day or a work day, today, this division between time, space, and activity is no longer readily available. So the question is, do we need to create new configurations of time, space, and activity? I say yes, we do. We need to learn how to create spaces in sufficient conditions that make it possible for our children to maintain structure and to build on our natural ability to learn and develop. 
Um, so that can be basically by, uh, again, keeping it simple, right? I mean, it's so overwhelming. The experience in and of itself is so overwhelming. So in order to keep it simple, I would suggest that parents think about um, uh, opportunities to allow kids to come up with their own interests, formulate their own questions. What do they want to do? What and how do they want to structure their day? So that again, going back to the triple A model, the kids come up with their own schedule, with the understanding of what really uh, learning means. Uh, uh, by the way, the definition of curriculum, right? The etymology of the word curriculum is to run with. I think schools, um, and there's so much research that shows that schools have forgotten um, what, what curriculum really means and should mean, to run with the interest of the children. And that goes back to uh, what Simmer Papert said a long time ago. And, and so that the, the, the situation today and the interview with you, Michael, really makes me think uh, that we need to um, um, be actually satisfied with this opportunity. I mean, if we look at the positive aspect of this experience, this is an opportunity for us as teachers and parents to build on this uh, special reality and, and really finally making sure that uh, kids do grow and develop with our support uh, and, and really make it possible for them to uh, develop their agency, autonomy and authorship of uh, content. All right, perfect. Well, thank you very much for this, Asna. And uh, you've been watching another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with has been Asna Fellas.